Hey folks, welcome back to After Work Gaming. Tonight we're back in stasis, and here we are, we're back in hydroponics. We have to get past this insect swarm, and for that, last time we got this vaporized queen pheromone, which is basically a vaporized version of the queen's milk that we can harvest. Uh, and we have an extra packet here, I guess. I, well, I don't know why. Uh, so, in order to placate these insects, which would probably sting us to death if we did something otherwise, if we didn't do it beforehand, uh, let's see. Can we? It's a vapor, right? So we can't, like, slather it all over ourselves. So can we just toss it at the swarm? Right? Oh, here we go. It should dissipate. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Or... Or not. Hold on. Insect swarm in great clusters. Their body... Um... Okay. No, that didn't work. Okay. Uh, oh, is it? That's okay. Hold on. Let's go vaporize another another sample. That's why we get multiple samples because we can throw it at the wrong place. Cool. Okay. Where's the? There it is. There's the milk. Put it here. Right. Go here. Activate the vaporizer. So this time. Okay, this time what we're gonna do is, I have an idea, let's throw it into the ventilation system. Right, we need something that'll, maybe it was just too localized, like where the, where you break the vial it doesn't really spread out, there's not a whole lot of air circulation in this one spot, right, it's pretty stagnant. But what if we throw it at the fans? Right, then it'll go into the system and it'll just get blown out. So let's take this and let's throw it at the fans and see what happens. Uh, hey, bugs. The hell? Why did it bleed? Hey. Is it... Could it be that, like, you throw it there and then they all rush the fan and then they die? Is that the idea? That's why they're all, like, that's why all the blood? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, so we looked at all of this. This is the, yeah, these are the oxygen collection tanks. We can interact with them, but let's... <laughs> let's not do that yet. Uh, instead, let's leave this area and see what's beyond there. Ooh. The oxygen garden's my favorite part of any ship. Green, full, natural. Uh, okay, just to point out real quick, somebody pointed it out in the comments to the other video, but, um... John is clearly hallucinating, like, images of either his wife or his child, or both, because you saw that little, like, ghost kid here. Yeah, so just FYI. Um, what else we got here? Slowly spinning fan. The leaves hanging near this fan rustle softly as they sway slowly in the breeze. Uh, water collection pool. Every so often, the overflow from this pool spills onto the human form below, anointing its face with water. Corpse. Marcos H. Valdez III, Training Academy Personnel, Personal Data Tag 28871, Security Level 1. Okay. Body engulfed in vines. The vines surround the body so completely that you're surprised when you notice it still draws breath. Unconscious, this soul must have been resting here for a while, unless the vines grew incredibly quickly. And we can interact with it. Okay, we'll do that in a second. Plants. Verdant, plants, li verdant plant life covers nearly every surface of the room. Bridge and observation platform. This bridge spans a pair of observation platforms. Hanging vines, you almost expect to see some kind of simian beast shimmying along the vines. Huh. Thick overgrown vine, this vine ripples with the sinews of a giant's arm. If the vine continues to grow, the metallic support slat won't last much longer. Oh, this. Huh. Okay, oh. Ooh. Uh, corpse, Donald Fryer, Protocol Officer, Groom Lake Com, Personal Data Tag 29873, Security Level 1. Yeah. Corpse. Drakan. Hmm. Crewman. Groom, uh, Groom Lake uh, Gen. Personal data tag 3529. Security level 0. What's... Jesus. What is this? Frank Flurry. Bartender. Personal data tag 63029. Security level 0. Bartender. What the heck are you doing up here, man? Alright. Uh, let's interact with the body. And then we'll go to this next area, I guess. Oh, 
we just pick up? Emergency. Oh my god! This is this is Gray's assistant. This is like um what's her name? Akiza, I think? Yeah, remember she in her last log she said that like she convinced the rest of the crew to give her the flare because it kept the bugs away. Uh, but that like the fungus was already growing over her. Dang, she's still alive? Um, okay, what's here? Um Um Alright, we'll look at that later. Uh, or last, rather. Overgrown vines. The vines are thick and twisted. Thick vine. The thick, muscular vine seems to pulse with life. If it grows any more, the metal support be supports beneath it will collapse. Okay. Spinning fan. This fan spins bravely on. Planting. The vines form a lush carpet that covers the rough metal flooring. Stagnant water collection pool. Algae has left scum over the surface of the water of this stagnant pool. Planting. The vines form a lush... Yeah, yeah. Overgrown vines, like the millions of silky steel wires in a suspension cable, the vines here have braided themselves so densely that the corridor is completely blocked. Oh, this. <laughs> I can imagine. Stuck fan. The vines have grown through the air ducts to impede the functioning of the fans. Corpse. Ingo Gadao, Nurse, General Science Division. Personal data tag 27983, security level 1. Grayson Wendell, Cook, personal data tag, 28547, security level 0. PDA, Eleanor Way, Dr. Way. She's encrusted with fungus and vines, a human nerve center for the twisting growths around her. Appallingly, she's still alive. Mm. All right, buddy. Oh, God. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's... Alright, let's talk to Eleanor away first. We can't just ignore her. I can get you out. I can cut you free. Dang. Okie dokie. Um, well, we have... Can't shoot her. We don't have bullets. We have the... Okay, let's read the PDA first. Sorry, Eleanor. Yeah, okay. January 19th. January 19th. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all. I simply wish his kindness had extended to Chelsea. The galley chef told me that a few of the other crew members are uncomfortable with having an ARG patient on staff. I asked if her work was in any way below standard, at which point he grew uncomfortable and admitted exactly as I thought. No, she was a superb worker, but his team were uncomfortable with her anyway. Being a geneticist and a Christian may appear contradictory to most, but that is their burden, not mine. I believe in grace and mercy. It wasn't Chelsea's fault she was born an ARG baby. James, my ex-husband, blamed me. James wanted her terminated, and when I refused, he packed up and left. That suits me. I'd rather be without an unloving husband and father than without my beautiful child. And she is. She is beautiful. A gift from God. And for a ship full of the most, supposedly, forward-thinking people in the galaxy, their aversion to her condition repulses me. Interesting. March 20th. I actually have a few friends who are uh, highly religious, but also... Uh, geneticists or, or biological scientists uh, there's no contradiction they just you know they're like they balance it out march 20th tolerance and patience are virtues greatly praised by the lord but aboard the groom lake i find my stores of both here the uh, both these virtues sorely tested i discovered through one of my subordinates that a new shipment arrived on board a few days ago despite uh, destined for project seed my disapproval of the dangers of seed are no secret. Considering the size of the shipment and the clear attempt to cut me out of the loop regarding the delivery, I suspect some of my colleagues are trying to mask the precise nature of what it is that has arrived. 
If it is as I suspect, there will be no, and I mean no, lengths I will not go to in order to depose Dr. Malin. Oh, that's why she, uh, she, like, buddied up with Dr. Gray. Kane Corporation is a company for the promotion of the sciences, not for the sinister schemes and unprincipled ambitions of individuals. I have moral issues with Kane and their weapons research. It tests my faith, but Kane's medical breakthroughs have changed the world and my world too. It's because of Kane created research that Chelsea is even alive. This is why I do what I do. I work in genetics to find cures for my dearest Chelsea and others like her, not for money. It's my job to put things right for her. I like the the uh, the decoration here with the um I think that's Jesus, right? Okay. Uh it goes towards like the character uh because we know she's religious not only from this but from her interaction with Akiza. May 21st, I had lunch with Dr. Gray this afternoon. Yeah, we had that email. He is an odious little man and utterly misanthropic, but if you need somebody to talk about Project Seed, then there are few people who give up information more easily. His ego easily outweighs his senses of confidentiality. Project leaders and project members are not allowed to discuss details of individual projects, but he can't resist himself. Nevertheless, he revealed disturbing details. I'm aware of our sample origins. We need human genetic material in order to develop cures for human beings. It's a hard truth, but there's paperwork, permission forms, and contracts that create the supply. That shipment has none of those things. Alright, I'm guessing that this is like just human bodies. Just straight up. This is what we're talking about, product storage. Um, September the 25th, they're children. Oh God, in all your great mercy, how could you let Malin, that unholy monster, do this? It's taken months, but finally I found a young cargo worker named Danica Boxer. She was referred to me by Dr. Tenshu. Such a sweet girl. Yeah, that's Akiza. It seems the cargo was a combination of adults and children, all of whom were acquired through illegal channels for use in genetic research. I did not agree to this. I'll leave this place and take Chelsea with me before I spend one minute more working for a company that endorses the use of children in research. The, there are not enough words to describe the soulless creatures that did this. Revenge? I don't believe in revenge. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Hmm. This is, this is tracking Akiza very clearly, because now the next entry is like, I should have resigned. No? No. November 26th. Where is she? The creatures are attacking in full force. The screams are over the radio. They're dying. They're all dying. I hear them scuttle through the vents, see the blood they spill and spray over the walls. Chelsea. Chelsea, oh God, please bring her to me. I'm trapped in hydroponics. Please let my little girl find me. December the 9th. Voice note. I can see Chelsea inches from me, lifeless. I contemplate, I contemplated taking my own life as she died just before my eyes. When those creatures attacked, the crew sealed off parts of the ship, and I was left trapped in hydroponics. That fungus got to me, and now it's inside, profaning my body, its nerves wrapped around my cerebral cortex. I can feel it move. I try to move my arms, but it won't let me. It's making me watch the fungus consume my baby girl. I must watch and pray for the end to come, so then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. Dang. Okay. Great, great away. Dr. Way, your comments are most flattering. Uh -huh. I suspect, however, that a promotion isn't forthcoming because of the lack of attention paid to our section. Ignorance is frustrating. Our lack of understanding of what takes place at the top of this food chain is of great irritation to me. You do seem to be pushing relentlessly for information about this cargo, though, and I'm somewhat uncomfortable discussing it any further. I fear I may already have said too much. For the sake of your career, my dear, I'd suggest discontinuing your pursuit. You're a fine geneticist and are clearly one of the most talented people on this ship. Don't let it go to waste. Sebastian. Dr. Tenshu. Dr. Wei, a matter of spirit. Dr. Wei, I know that you're a spiritual woman and at times receive a great deal of criticism for this, but I feel I can speak to nobody else. I'm well known for my positivity and cheerfulness, and I believe I've earned my nickname, Dr. Gray's Smile. God, I am haunted by what I'm hearing on the ship and wonder if perhaps it's merely induced by my own fears. Oh, to hell with it. I'll ask you straight out. Do you believe in ghosts? You may think that I'm being ridiculous or delusional, but I can hear things children crying deep in the bowels of the ship. I work many late nights and I'm convinced that I can hear crying through the vents. Where are these sounds coming from? 
I did hear rumors that before the Groom Lake was refitted, a group of children were brought on board and her quarters were on this deck. There was a malfunction with the heating unit and, well, they all died. I don't want to seem like I'm wasting your time, but I enjoyed our talk yesterday and your open-mindedness about matters of the soul. Kind regards, Akiza. Huh. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get back here. Grayson, go. Oh, well, Chelsea is not here. Interesting. Chelsea's not here? That's odd. Her daughter. Um, okay, so... Anything more to say? No. We have a flare. And we have oxygen generators. And we have a circulatory air circulation system. Okay, let's do this. I got an idea. Go back here. <laughs> oh, this is going to be terrible. Someone's going to get angry. Let's go ahead and open the oxygen generator. I'm assuming that lets the air out, or the oxygen out. Oxygen levels increasing. Yeah. Let's go for the th second one. one. Oxygen levels increasing to dangerous levels. Okay. Let's do this. Oxygen levels pose a fire hazard. CSEC has been notified. Yeah, let them notify CSEC. Um, CSEC. Uh, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. This may kill me, in which case I'll restart immediately right here. But let's give it one more shot. Let's just pop the flare down here. And uh, see if it works. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't? I beg to differ. What if I just toss it where, like, at um, the fan? I don't think this will fit. Oh my god, we don't have to do what I think we have to do, do we? We don't have to give her the flare. That's a little, that's a little Dr. Kevorkian. You know, where, where she chooses the time. Okay, let's give it a shot. Eleanor? I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you in this. But you need to help me first. I don't need you to leave. I need you to crack this flare. The oxygen will ignite. Then you will die. suit has regulated body temperature to benchmark level. <laughs> the fire systems just went haywire over here, John. What did you do? I cleared the vines. With a flamethrower? Something like that. Fire in oxygen gardens. One, three, five, six, nine. Fire in Oxygen Gardens 2, 7, 8. Fire Suppression System Activated. Warning. Fire Suppression System Compromised. Warning. Shit! Oxygen production has been compromised. Are the biomes still intact? Oh. Oh God, please don't say burn them out. Just the one on this level. It's cause a chain reaction, John. They're all going up. We have a time limit now. Hours at most. Get my daughter right now. No? Okay. Um, gun and my PDT. Let's go. Uh, 
flames. Fire climbs the wall in a small fraction of the time it must have taken the vines to mount it. Sharp tongues of orange and yellow dart out of the burning laboratory, consuming the organic matter hungrily, but leaving no mark on the curved composite walls. The smell of compost fills the hot air. The vegetation is being reduced to noxious mulch by the creeping flames. Years of work destroyed the flames. I'm down with that. All right, let's get in the elevator, John. Yeah. I know, I kind of wish that music was still going. this? Well, clearly one deck down, but is this Project Seed? Uh, at least it's not Planet Side Elevator filled with advertising. It's not a Planet Side Elevator filled with advertising screens, the elevator. Okay, fine. Work light. This seems to have been undergoing a renovation. Construction plastic. Most of the room has been covered in heavy-duty plastic sheeting. Power pad. A high-voltage wireless power pad provides a portable energy source for engineers and mechanics. Toolbox. The smooth surface of the metal toolbox is punctuated by the shiny metal pop rivets. Another work light. Let it work area efficiently, giving off much needed heat. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else we got? What are these? Closed power cell housing. This lithium ion fuel cell provides high density energy storage and remote wireless charging. Huh. Hanging wires. Dangling wires resemble nooses. Anything else? Okay, so there's a. No? Only just the one door? Scaffolding. A large metal scaffold spans the room's width. Okay, let's check out the toolbox real quick. Actually, let's avoid the power pad. I don't want to risk anything. John. Looks like this place is being expanded. The seed was always expanding. That place scares me. Thanks. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, Taya. But, uh, okay. Good to know, though. Uh, high temperature slug gun. Oh, interesting. Um, can we shoot the power pad? Just out of curiosity, can we shoot stuff? Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Can we shoot the light? Ooh, that'll be interesting. I don't know what I was thinking, man. Oh, I, I was thinking of testing it. Alright, let's leave. Ah! Warning. Halo thing hypertotoxicity is at an elevated level. Robot. Say anything? No. Let's look around the room. Storage crates. A few storage crates sit like sentries outside the entrance to this restricted area. Oh good, it doesn't go back here. That thing does not look friendly though. Nothing of any use can be gained from the empty crates that litter this area. Okay. Mutagen Laboratory. The sheet canopy leads to a facility named the Mutagen Laboratory. Birthing Laboratory? The Birthing Laboratory, one of Kane Corporation's best-kept secrets. Okay, well, we'll check that out. Um, what else we got? Sink. Not even a handprint marks the surface of this sparkling clean sink. It might be the type with a built-in cleaning drone. Is this another one? Yeah. The stainless steel sink stands out after the successive levels of hell you've traversed. It's equipped with a variety of cleansing, cleaning agents that are presumably safe for skin. Power pad, a technology that provides an energy boost for heavy duty equipment. Oh, that could be useful. Biohazard? Airlock, the airtight steel frame forms a secure barrier to the adjacent room. Platform? Okay. Is this another exit? No, there's one, two, locked door, and then a robot, and then whatever this grid is, I'm assuming you do not want to walk through that grid. Doesn't look like it'll be happy times. Okay. 
since the robot is here. Mutagen or birthing laboratory? Mutagen or birthing laboratory? Oh, we can use the sink. Use the sink. Turn it off. John? John? Oh, it just plays an animation for a certain amount of time. Uh, can we clean the pistol? I think that would break. I don't know. It seems pretty bloody to me. Okay, let's... Um... Sure, let's go to the little birthing laboratory. And, uh, we'll look around that room and we'll probably end it there. how well we can describe this as science, Taya, but okay, fine. I'll leave that one to your perspective. Uh, it's pretty messed up. Okay, so let's let's just move our way around and then go to the center of the room. Obviously. Portable, defi portable defibrillator. Defibrillator is used in the, ca in the case of birth complications. Okay. Uh, that's not how I would describe what a defibrillator does, but sure. Computer terminal. This terminal appears to be unlocked and ready for use bloated fetus. The thing inside the incubator is anathema to nature. The poor creature should not exist, and what life it shows is reluctant and painful. Machinery. Although it is only a wall of gauges, they cluster and protrude like the offspring birthed on a Suriname toad's back. Yeah, FYI, don't look, what, don't look up what that is. That's uh, horrifying. I mean... I know we're playing a horror game, but like that's like real horror in nature is all I'm saying. Hybrid fetus. An organic pulsating fluid sac holds the fetus, an external placenta. There is something noticeably peculiar about the artificial placenta. On closer inspection, there are tiny, ragged apertures across its surface, almost as if it's been eaten at from within. Damn. There is a calmness about the suspended womb, but the pungent smell of amniotic fluid makes prolonged observation unbearable. Hybrid fetus, the sack of organic matter sways peacefully in its slumber, punctuated by a pulsating movement from within. The fluid sack rocks gently to and fro, containing neither a human nor animal, but a medical marvel nonetheless. Hybrid fetus? A hybrid of what? The awful engorged placenta hangs like a ripened fruit. The horror of this enlarged fetus sack is matched only by the horror within its fleshy walls. What is this? Organic nutrient growth. The pulsating and the pulsing sacks bleed their nutrient mixture onto the floor where the liquid congeals in clustered cysts. Chemicals of an unknown origin are contained within. Uh, anything else? Nutrient fibers. A network of tubes and intravenous lines attach the woman to the nutrient's vats like a series of umbilical cords. What fats? What? Tubes convey the nutrient mixture from the machines connected to the woman over to the brood against the wall. That's what's going on. Portable gurney, a wheeled stretcher to transport the sick and injured easily, but to wear. Disconnect, uh, disconnecting these poor women from the machines and wheeling them away on this gurney would be easy choice if it weren't for the fact that such an act would surely kill them. Okay, mist. A fine mist sprays down, anointing the bodies of the women below. Alright, and power cell, this lithium, well, I can interact with it. This lithium-ion fuel cell provides high-density energy storage and remote wireless charging. Okay, well... Fluids. The smell of almonds wafts from the viscous steam stream of fluids. Pregnant woman. We can interact with them. Seated in the chair is a woman in her mid-thirties, head shaved, limbs atrophied, tumescent in pregnancy. She's connected to a machine that feeds and sedates her. So this is Project Seed, right? This is the thing that we've seen hinted at in emails, where they're like, oh, you have to have been pregnant in the last whatever and a certain age. This is what they do with them? Holy moly. Pregnant woman, you remember seeing Renaissance-era sculptures of nuns in Holy Communion. Their eyes rolled back, bodies contorted in ecstatic agony. 
there's a hint of that expression across the unconscious woman's face. And uh, she's trying to communicate, but her words are little more than slurred vowels. Her throat is dry, and she is clearly extremely weak. Huh. All right, well, let's at least do a couple of things here. Let's pick up this defibrillator. Or defibrillator. Defib and it looks like it's fully charged. Yeah. Defibrillator, not defibrillator. I'm sorry about that. And then uh, let's use the computer terminal and just find out. Oh, boy. Project Seed Revised, version 6. Um, all right, let's read these and we'll stop it there. Because I'm very curious to know what the hell is going on here. And then we'll stop. Because, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, what a cliffhanger, right? Update, update by Dr. G. Milan, Kane Corporation, all rights reserved, for the eyes of the Kane Board of Directors only. Seed is an attempt to create the ultimate super soldier by, in simple terms, activating junk strands of human DNA. Over the years, the human genome has shed, or made dormant, certain strands of its own DNA sequence for various evolutionary reasons. Professor Salam Gerund observed that certain dormant parts of these genes were not so much junk as they were potential, that is, genetic information contained and completely sublimated by a dominant gene. Professor Gerund... What is it Gerund? You guys let me know in the comments. Gerund's actually a word for something, and I think it's like a, 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 a grammatical term, but okay. Gerund engineered an early life form based on this original theory by introducing these identified genetic strands in the early stages of embryo formation. The initial concept was intriguing, but his ultimate result was a group was a group of uncontrollable animalistic creatures. Version 6 of this proposal is to update these same dormant genes into the human makeup by use of genetic splicing, thereby introducing desirable physical and mental characteristics over a generation to produce fast learning, hard to kill, and utterly ruthless soldiers. Okay. Observation report 1, Dr. Williams. Her vital signs are steady, certain hormonal levels are extremely high, but I'm countering this with judicial administration of depressants in each case. Survival chance is very high. She's young, healthy, there are no signs of any infection or complication capable of disrupting the birth. Recommendation, keep up your observation, prepare for phase 1 treatment. Observation report 2, Dr. Backman. The subject, despite her promising early progress, appears to be failing. Supposition is that she cannot withstand the foreign genetic structure that is being fused into her body. Typical signs of rejection are being displayed. Recommendation. Observation for additional 24 hours. If there are no signs of improvement, then termination and disposal of the patient is recommended. Alright. Observation 3. Backman. The subject is progressing well, as well as being... Aesthetically attractive, she has all the other genetic traits required. Initial concerns about her suitability, voiced by Dr. Milan chiefly due to the number of her sexual partners, have been proven unfounded. She will be a perfect carrier. The hybrid DNA is fusing to my satisfaction. Apart from a small amount of pain, her body appears to be coping with the adjustments. I have prescribed her a steady dose of anesthetic to keep her subdued and comfortable. Hybrid subject number 302 by Dr. Milan. Since delivery, hybrid subject 302 has been kept inside an incubator due to its respiratory distress, assisted breathing is required. Cardiac arrest has occurred and the use of automated external defibrillator has been required to revive the child. Alright, so this is the thing in the, in the box. I deduced that the condition and sickliness are due to the late molecular bonding between hybrid and host DNA in the mother. A weak nervous system is also highly likely in this case, but the subject's regenerative capability can be stimulated with steroids. Conclusion. The child is weak, but will survive. The mother is suitable for continued breeding. Boy. Um. Kind of don't want to stop, but I kind of have to, don't I? Because I don't want to take up a lot of time here. Okay, so. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I mean, it was a dark game. This game just went dark. Okay. Uh, so we're going to call it there. Next time we come back, we're going to find out what the heck is going on in this room and in the, the mutagen laboratory across the way and see what happens when we interact with the women and also what we can do with this power cell. I'm assuming we get to destroy the entire lab. I'm just going to go ahead and guess. We seem to be a, a force of destruction at this point. And yeah, so that's the plan for next time. If you guys enjoyed this, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. Let's me know that I'm doing something right. Let's me know that you guys want to see more of this stuff. If you have thoughts, if you have ideas, if you think uh, I have overlooked something or could be doing something differently in this game, by all means, leave a comment. Everything's welcome. And in any case, 
I'll see you all next time. Better